Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Javita Christie and in this video I'm going to explain ER model, mapping cardinalities, participation and weak entity sets. So we'll start with mapping cardinalities and they are also known as cardinality ratios and what that means is they are the number of entities to which another entity can be associated by a relationship set. So we'll see some of the types now. The first type is one to one. And one to one is when an entity in A is associated with at most one entity in B. And an entity in B is associated with at most one entity in A. And notice the use of uh, the words at most. So what that means is it's either zero or one. So it's not necessary that an entity has to be associated. It may or may not be associated. So if it's not, then that's all right. But if it is associated, it can be associated with at most one. And I'll show you an example. So as you can see here, there's a set A and there's a set B. And from here, A1 is connected or associated with B1. A2 is associated with B2 and A3 is associated with B3. So only one entity from one set is associated with only one entity from the second set. That is what makes a one-to-one -one relationship. And to show it uh, symbolically in an ER diagram, we use this. So this rhombus in between is for the relationship set between two entities which will come here. But at the same time, we have attached over here two arrows. Those arrows indicate that this is a one-to-one -one relationship. The next type of relationship is a one-to-many. This is a cardinality where an entity in A is associated with any number, that is zero or more, of entities in B. An entity in B, however, can be associated with at most one entity in A. And that looks like this. You have an entity A and an entity set A is having A1, A2, and A3. And you can see that A1 is associated with B1 and B2. And A2 is associated with B3 as well as B4. And uh, A3 is associated with just B5. So what happens here is one entity from A is connected with many in B, but one entity from B, for example, B1 is connected with only one in A. So B1 is only connected with A1. B2 is only connected with A1. B3 is only connected with A2. B4 is only connected with A2. And B5 is only A3. This is a one-to-many relationship. And the opposite of this is a many-to-one relationship where an entity in A is associated with at most one entity in B. And an entity in B can be associated with any number, zero or more, of entities in A. And that looks like this. This is the diagram. And you can see that it's just the opposite of what we saw in uh, one to many. Here you have one entity of A connected with only one entity of B. So A1 with only B1, A2 with only B1, A3 with only B2. A4 with only B3 and A5 with only B3. But if you see from the other side, you can see that B1 is connected with A1 as well as A2. B2 is connected with only A3, but B3 is connected with A4 as well as A5. So this is what makes a many to one relationship from A to B. And if you look at the same relationship from B to A, then it becomes a one to many relationship. So it depends on which way you're looking from. So what, what perspective you're looking from. So this relationship is shown in this manner. Uh, diagrammatically, you have a rhombus in between and you have a line without an arrow and a line with an arrow. So this is many to one. So if you were to show, uh, show this over here, then you would put A here and you would put B on the side of the arrow. But if uh, you were trying to show a one-to-many relationship from A to B, then you would put the arrow here and you would leave this line without the arrow. So uh, the arrow goes to the one part of the relationship. 
The next type of uh, cardinality is many-to-many -many cardinality, where an entity in A is associated with any number that is zero or more of entities in B. And an entity in B is associated with any number zero or more of entities in A. So what that looks like is this. There are no rules. You can attach anything with anything. So you have A1 attached with anything B1, B2, A2 attached with only B1, A3 with B3, and A4 also with B3. So what this gives you is a many-to-many -many relationship. And to show it symbolically, you will simply make a rhombus and just make two lines without arrows on either side that makes a many-to-many -many relationship in an ER diagram. Next thing we're going to see is participation. And participation is the association between entity sets. And there are two kinds. One is total participation, and another one is partial participation. And I'll explain that to you with an example. So you can see over here that there is um, set, uh, there are two sets A and B, and A1 over here is connected with B1, A2 with B2, and A3 with B3. And you can see that there is one more uh, value, one more entity in the set A, that is A4, but it is not connected with anything in B. So this shows that set A is not fully participating in this relationship between A and B. So this is not a total participation of A, but it is a total participation of B. So you can say that A partially participates in the relationship and B totally participates in the relationship. And then look at the second diagram where all entities of A are connected with some entity of B and also all entities of B are connected with some entity of A. And this gives you a total participation of A as well as B. So in order to show it diagrammatically, we show it in this manner. That is um, the part, uh, this is the diagram that I have used in my video before. And if you want to understand this, you can watch the video linked in the description box. And what this means is there is a relationship between instructor and student called teacher's relationship. And here you can see I have connected with a solid line, a single solid line, but here I have used two solid lines. And what that means is that student entity set totally participates in the teacher's relationship. So, and, and on the other hand, instructor entity set only partially participates in the relationship teaches. And I'll give you an example. Um, if you are in a university and you have some instructors that teach only in particular semesters and they do not teach in some, some part of the year, then those instructors are still part of the university, but they, they are not teaching anything right now. So what that means is they are not connected with any students right now. So they wouldn't be participating in the teacher's relationship. Students, however, are always connected with some or the other instructor. And that is why there is a double line telling you that each student is connected with some instructor. And that is why students are fully participating in the teacher's relationship. So that is what participation means. Now we are going to see a weak entity set. So this is a diagram and I'm going to explain that to you in a minute uh, because I have to explain what a weak entity set is. There are two entity sets in this diagram. One is customer and another one is loan. And there's also a relationship between the two which is shown by a rhombus. And it contains, as you can see, it's not, not shown the way relationship sets are normally shown. It is, it is shown with a double rhombus. And this entity over here is also not shown with a single rectangle like normal entity sets, but it is shown with double rectangles. And I've already explained to you just now what two lines over here mean. 
they mean that the, the loan entity set totally participates in the borrower's relationship. But what about the two rhombuses and the two rectangles? What, that, what, what should that mean? So that means that loan is a weak entity set. And when can you say that an entity set is a weak entity set? So whenever an entity set does not contain a primary key, then that is when you can say that that entity set is weak because it cannot form its own primary key and it has to depend on some other entity set to form a primary key. If you need to understand what a primary key is, I'd suggest that you go ahead and watch my video on relational model, which I've linked down below. So you can see that and you'll understand what a primary key is. So let's just uh, learn in more detail about what this weak entity set means. So an entity set that does not have sufficient attributes to form a primary key is termed as a weak entity set. And an entity set that has a primary key is called a strong entity set. For a weak entity set to be meaningful, it must be associated with another entity set also called the identifying or owner entity set. Every weak entity set must be associated with an identifying entity that is the weak entity set is said to be existence dependent on the identifying entity set. So here the identifying entity set is customer and the weak entity set is loan. And the reason behind that is there is a customer who is having an account at the bank and that customer when he or she takes a loan, then you can see here that there are two attributes here, last name and uh, uh, sorry, the loan name and the loan date, or you can call it last name and the loan date. But, the, but what I want to uh, point out is you would not have any unique combinations of these two here because the name of the person is going to repeat if that person takes out more than one loan. And uh, if you have a, a loan date, then it's possible that one person is trying to take multiple loans on the same date, which means again, the date will also repeat. So you, you won't be able to get a unique combination of name and date here, which is why this has got no primary key. Remember that to make a primary key, you need attributes, set of attributes that can uh, identify each and every row uniquely, but here you do not get that. And that is why this is a weak entity set. Uh, let's see a little bit more about this. So the identifying entity set is set to own the weak entity set that it identifies. So you can say that customer actually owns the loan. And the relationship associating the weak entity set with the identifying entity set is called the identifying relationship. So borrows is an identifying relationship and which is why it is depicted with a double rhombus. The discriminator of a weak entity set is a set of attributes that allows this distinction to be made. So a set of attributes inside the loan you can see they are name and date. And when you see that, you know that you cannot get a unique combination, but you can uh, associate, it, associate these attributes with some attribute from customer and together they could create a discriminator to identify each row of loan uniquely. So the primary key of a weak entity set is formed by the primary key of the identifying set plus the weak entity sets discriminator. So if you wanted to form a primary key for loan, then you would use CID from customer or some other attribute from customer that helps you to make a primary key and then connect it with some attribute from here, which attaches to the customer to make a discriminator. Now an entity set that has a primary key is termed as a strong entity set. So if you are ever asked to define a strong entity set and a weak entity set, you could say that an entity set having a primary key is the strong one and the one that does not have a primary key or does not have enough attributes to form a primary key would be a weak one. 
So to conclude, you can say that the loan is having attributes loan name and loan date. And because of these two attributes, uh, because of them not being uh, a unique combination every time, you cannot form a primary key in loan. And because of this, you need to depend on the customer relationship in order to form uh, a primary key. And also notice how loan totally participates here in the borrower's relationship. And the reason behind that is because each and every loan obviously belongs to some customer. So you cannot uh, say that it partially participates. But customer partially participates in borrower's relationship because each and every customer does not have a loan. So that is why it is created in this manner. So I hope that this concept is uh, very much clear. And if you have any doubts, you can leave it in the comments down below. And if you want to watch the previous videos on relational model and basics of ER model, you can go ahead and look at the description box. That's it for today's video and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.